All right, so let's take a look at the market that we're in. So this is the S&P this morning, uh, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. And so um, February 14th, we had uh, four breakout trades today. Uh, let's go back to midnight. Um, sorry, my voice is a little bit uh, weak here this morning. So, so let's, uh, we got one, two, three, four breakout trades. All right, so this is midnight. Um, uh, what these are are cup and handle formations. We went over this several times in the videos. There's your cup and handle. Cup and handles are great formations for continuation breakouts. Very, very accurate setup. But that is the little cup and handle formation. You can see when a breakout is coming up um, because it gives you a, a big heads up. Like right now, you can see the next breakout will be on uh, the S&P day, 5,000 and a quarter. You'll see these um, zones. They'll go horizontal or they'll have an equal close. Once you get an equal close, when you get two equal closes, that is the new breakout level. So here is our new breakout level on the S&P. That's our new breakout, okay? So when you're looking at this, we have two setups now. So if we're looking for setups going forward, there's only two setups you're going to look at. We're going to look at that deep retracement. Let me get this off here. So that's a new zone breakout level at 50 or 5,000 a quarter. And then we have this outer zone. We all know my outer zone's been tested over the last 30 years. This is a very powerful zone that we're looking for a close below and a continuation above. The zone likes to reverse price in all these markets. So we're looking for a break below this level, a close below this level, and then a close back inside this level. So that would be called an outer slingshot, an outer zone slingshot now you do have shallow slingshots you can use the oscillator below to pull yourself in if you want to take shallow slingshots like this this is a shallow slingshot so here's your outer zone so those are the two setups we're looking at uh, right now currently in the S&P as this market uh, ticks along you're looking for a zone breakout a close above you'll get a yellow trigger bar or yellow bar that fires a yellow candle that's a yellow candle that's your entry that was your entry this morning at 7 805 414 and then 145 this morning <clears throat> so we have deep retracements and shallow retracements so you have two types of setups you try to stock during the day on all these markets one you got the retracement trade, which is a slingshot, deep or shallow. If you're taking deep retracements, you're going to look for this outer edge to get closed below by at least a candle, meaning it closed below and it's got to close back inside of it before you have a trend change. Then you have shallow reach. If you're taking shallow retracements, this is where you get a retracement here. The arrow fires, but you're not outside of the zone. You're not outside the zone. If that happens, you can use this oscillator below and wait for yourself to get into a stronger market. If it gets above 100, that means you're, you're trending. If it gets above that 100 mark, that is your entry right here. Your entry would be above 100. That is your entry. And your initial stop will be below the low of that bar, below the candle. So that's a retracement. You got shallow and you got deep. And those are called slingshots. You're trying to get outside of the zone. If the market's too strong, which has been this morning since midnight, 
Remember, the market can only do things. It can go vertical or it can go horizontal. If it goes horizontal, that means it's in a range. You, you typically get these outer zone slingshots in a, in a chop or range market, and they, they tend to work well in chop and range, where these zone breakouts tend to work in trend markets. So the second setup, they are going to stalk, and that's what we had four in a row here this morning. We had a lot of them yesterday, too. This is called a zone breakout. This is where the market's trying to make new highs in any given market or at new lows with the overall zone trend. So the zone trend is green. It's trying to break to new highs, break to new highs, break to new highs. And if it's red, it's trying to break to new lows. So as you see this morning, the market keeps setting higher highs or higher lows, sorry, and higher highs. And that's where you keep getting these zone breakouts. So the next zone breakout we'll look for this morning is 5,000 and a quarter, or more importantly, 5,075, that swing high. See if we can get a yellow, yellow candle to pull us in into that market. Or more importantly right now is we're looking for an outer zone sling. Let's see if we can close a couple candles below this zone and pull ourselves into a sling. Remember, a, an outer zone is going to close at least one candle close below this outer zone and then close back inside of it. So the candle's actually got to close back inside of that zone. And once it closes back inside that zone, then we have a setup for an outer zone trade. And you guys, uh, Sal, good job yesterday on talking about that. Uh, as it happened yesterday. We had two of them yesterday in the S&P. We had two outer zone trades. We had a short, and then we had a buy. So one just happened here this morning on the NQ. So what you want to do is you want to get to this outer zone You want to get to this outer zone right here. Get to the outer zone. Close by one candle. And then it's got to close back inside. This candle right here, close back inside. And that will produce an outer zone trade. So if you look on the NASDAQ, it tried to produce an outer zone trade. It did one here at 750. It tried to produce one here, but never closed back inside. It's trying to do one here. If I roll over to the S&P, it should spin nothing but we've been moving up hard. So on this strategy right here, the outer zone, we haven't hit the outer zone. But what, it, what you have been hitting are the zone breakouts. It's been zone breakout after zone breakout since 350 when the when we started getting action yesterday. It's been breakout, 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 breakout. So you can see these two strats work really good together, the indicator and strats, because either you're going to get a zone breakout like this. Here's the S&P. Right? You're going to be setting new highs, new highs, new highs, new highs, or new lows, new lows, new lows, or it's going to get a retracement. So the next setup on the S&P for a zone, zone, Continuation, we got, we got to close below 87. Now, we got two of these yesterday. We had one there, and we had one here earlier in the morning at 9, what, 9.39. We closed outside at 9.39 yesterday on the S&P, and it fell, what, almost, what, 61 and three quarters. The short was 78. So it fell almost 16 points potential on that zone breakout. This is the one, good job, Sal, yesterday was calling in the room that is coming up. He was correct. It closed below, closed back inside. Good job, Sal. like how you project these ahead of time. 77, and it ran not as much as the first one, but still ran five and three-quarter points, almost six points. So now this morning... If we look at it, if I put these two strats beside each other, these two strat indicators, you can see it in the room is the same thing that's going on right now. 
87 is my strat that's running at 87 and right here is an 87 outer edge trade so it's trying to wait for an outer edge buy on this strat and this strat is going to wait until it breaks above this zone it's going to wait till it breaks above this zone for a breakout so the breakout is five thousand and a quarter so it's waiting for a breakout of 5,000 quarter on that zone, or it's waiting for a retracement. Now you can see these in the room too. They're easy to see. It's the same thing on the charts. You got your outer zone trade right here at 87. It's got to close below and then close back inside. That would be a, reach, a deep retracement. Or... If the market's too strong, close above 5,000 a quarter, and we're going to have another breakout. So that's a deep retracement outer zone slingshot. This is a zone breakout. Now, if these arrows fire before you get to the outer zone, right at my zone or before then, this is called a shallow retracement. If that arrow fires and the audible alert goes off on your computer, it tells you that your oscillator below. You're below if it gets back inside of it. Your oscillator below gets back inside of it. Then you have a continuation. All right, this is a stronger market. When you get into these stronger markets, and this, this oscillator below can confirm these yellow candles that come in on these breakout trades, because if you notice that you broke out here, and consequently you're breaking into a stronger market and stayed above 100 the whole time. You broke out here, and you're already in a strong market. So this is a really good one because you're already into a strong pushing market. It's ready to rumble. You're already in a strong market. This one, you can see that it came down. The oscillator came down on the retracement, popped right back above 100. You got the breakout on this last one. And this one, um, it happened just about the same time. What you'll find is, is right when you break out this oscillator, when it first is breaking out, if it first breaks out, the run is probably just beginning. Because if you look at if, uh, historically on these trades set up on these breakouts with this oscillator, if this oscillator is just breaking out one bar or at the same time or two candles before, and then you get the trigger to pull in the yellow bar candle, it typically has some nice meat to the trade. I mean, this is a nice little trade, 75 and a half, high as 86. That's a nice setup, 87, potential up to 94, and then 95, potential up to 5,000. So that oscillator down here is a nice way to confirm it. All right, so just a neat way to, uh, to confirm the trades. Now what you can use then is in conjunction with this is market profile. Our profile will let us know all the participants in the market. So this is not just one group of traders. This is all the banks, the hedge funds, the prop firms, all the algorithms. So it lets us know where to find these outer edge trades, one, and two, where to find the breakout trades. If I'm getting, if I have an outer edge trade sell, and it's right on top of HVA, or type this happened yesterday uh, on the buy, outer edge buy. If so, my price profile dots or volume profile these outer edge on an outer edge deep retracement, you have a very, very high, very high probability trade because these are all the participants in the market. This is low value where the market should bounce. This is high value where the market should fall. Should buy, should fall. Now what happens, that's what's called a balanced market. So inside of this level, since the last 39 years, inside of this level is called a balanced market. And this is great for outer edge trades or even shallow retracements with the, with the um, oscillator below. If you break outside, when we break outside today of this level, low value area or high value area, red and green, the market becomes what's called an imbalanced market. And that's where the market is set up for a major fall or a major breakout. So if you get into this area of no support or area of no resistance, you want the breakout trades to fire. 
you want the breakdown trades, the zone breakdown trades to fire because there's no path of least support less resistance. Now, what you can do is you can use a previous day profile, and they're super, super accurate. You could, uh, as members know, since the last 39 years, or you can tell by looking at your own charts, they love to gravitate towards these previous profiles. So what you can do, you can have targets. So if I break down below low value area today and get an imbalanced market below 81, that's my sell signal in the market according to profile. That's worked for 39 years. And I know my target is all the way down here to 36 and a half. I know we're going to have a little hiccup at the control point. It likes to go to control point to control point. So if I know I break 81, I got to 74. But if I break 74 and a quarter this week, look at this gap in the market. I got a huge gap in the market. This is all the participants in the market. I'm looking for 74 to 36 and a half drop. So if you get any type of outer edge sell or any type of zone breakdown from 74 down to 36 and a half, you have a high probability trade. You're going to have a, a large possible runner going all the way down to that support level. Vice versa, if we break out to the upside, you can look at the previous day's levels. The previous day level here is obviously HVA is right on top of it. So we know, we know, we know this because of the last two profiles. We know where this market becomes imbalanced. It comes imbalanced when I get above 5,000 a quarter. So 5,000 a quarter, I got no resistance. None all the way up until 5,034. So I got 34 points of upside where there's no resistance, none, no resistance. And then I've got 74 down to 36, almost 34, 30, 34 points of downside. So you're equally... Um, reward to risk is equally on each side of the market as long as I get through HV and LVA. So I don't like going back more than three days unless I have to for a balance and imbalance market. But once you get in balance, see th this was a balanced market last night or, or two days ago, and then it got imbalanced in here and look what it does. It just drops down to the next profile level. You know, so the same thing will happen today. If we get outside of HVA, the probability is that we go to the next market profile from the previous day. I like to go two days back to find them. You typically, you just got to go one or two days back. That's it. Right here today, we only have to go two days back. I know my levels here, and I know my levels here for today. And that's a cool thing about this roadmap. This roadmap will tell us where this market should go. But what more importantly, it's going to let us know on these breakout trades and these zone breakout trades here, it's going to let me know right here of this 5,000 a quarter. If I break out, I'm in no man's land. I have no resistance for 30, they're what, 34 points to the upside. So my zone breakout trade should be a really, really nice trade setup going into that zone. Vice versa, if I break down below this zone, I got a big drop in the market. No resistance, it's imbalanced, because these are imbalanced markets. There, the balanced market's in between profile right now. It's balanced. But once you get outside that, it becomes imbalanced. Then I got these outer targets. I got this outer target there, outer target there. Pretty much 30 some odd points to the upside, 30 points to the downside. But right now, I'm, in a bal I'm bouncing between LV and HVA. I'm in a balanced market. And this has been working for the last 39 years, the same concept. It's a really good way for you to see all the participants in the market without looking at a lagging indicator like a moving average, a stochastic, or any other lagging moving averages that's out there. This is a tier one indicator because a tier one tells us where the participants are in the market. This is all the participants. That's not my opinion. That's not your opinion. That's the internals of the market. It's telling us we break out of 5,000 and a quarter, we should have about a 34-point upside run. We break down below 49.81, we should have about a 34-point downside hit. So knowing that we break out, we can position ourselves into these two breakout trades. I mean, we can position our trade into a retracement setup where we get this deep retracement or we get into this 
breakout, we take another breakout coming up at 5,000 and a half or 5,075 for another continuation to the upside. But what you'll find, like I said, is you'll find when these zones come up, these outer slingshots, when they do come up, if they're on HB and LVA, those are high probability trades. And um, Sal, good job yesterday. It was right on top price profile. He was talking about it. It bounced right off of it, pulled us in, and ran up, what, six, what, six seven points right after that. So, you know, that's how you can use the roadmap with these two setups. Because these two setups, the retracement setup really encompasses my, my uh, first wave trade that we've went over for years. It goes on my slingshot trade, which is our deep retracement trade went over for years. And my zone breakout is really my Momo trades into new territory. It's just, just using a zone break to confirm it, which is a little bit more powerful than our Momo trade. All right, so the next two setups we'll look for then before I turn this video off. I'm looking for a buy breakout of 55,000.75. That swing high because that's our zone breakout. See if it can turn yellow. Outer zone sling. See if we can get this retracement. We're good to go.